Hey there, welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph and I'm the host of this show. A show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and other forms of rock music. Okay, so this is our series. Rock and roll greats who thrilled us but have since passed on. This is episode number 34 from 1997. Okay, picked two people. One of them was a shoe in right from the start. I knew I was going to do him. The other guy, I kind of looked over several people and decided that he had that Canadian touch, so I thought I would give him some attention. Okay, so first of all, <clears throat> the first one is going to be Brian Connolly, of course. For those of you who know that name, know right away that he was the lead singer for the hard rock, glam rock band, The Sweet, or Sweet if you prefer. Um, anyways, uh, give you the vitals on Brian. He was born October the 5th, 1945 in, I'm going to get this name right, in Govanna Hill, Glasgow, Scotland. And he died either the 9th or the 10th, probably in between the two, on February 1997 at the age of 51 in Slough, England. <clears throat> Uh, the music, of course, we already said, glam rock, hard rock, pop rock, and bubblegum rock. And he did do actually a little bit of country music as well, or country rock if you prefer. Um, his instruments were primarily a vocalist, but he did play keyboard, synthesizers, guitar, and a little bit of percussion as well. Active from 1963 through to 1997. Um, he was... Uh, born his mother left him in the hospital and went back to work and his father was never really released um, but he was given up for foster care ended up with uh, Jim and Helen Magna Mag McNamus I don't know why I have some parts problems with that whose uh, son Mark McNamus was actually well known there in Scotland um, they were stepbrothers although they for a long time thought they were real brothers because they both kind of resembled the father even though he wasn't actually related to him. Um, he said his earliest influences were the Everly Brothers. And then um, when he was... I want to get this right. Oh, one of the first bands that he played in was called Generation X. No, not the Generation X of Billy Idol, a different Generation X. They did do have some singles they, uh, that were did really not much anyways the vocalist he was the vocalist Chris Elbridge was um, also in the band uh, Chris Elbridge and Lee uh, Lee Mordecai were the guitar players um, Mark Conway was the bass player and Martin Alas was the drummer so he stayed with them for a bit and then um, Conley replaced uh, eventually he replaced Ian Gillen in uh, Wayne Wright's Gentleman, and Ian Gillum went on to Deep Purple. Um, in that band was also Mick Tucker, so there's the first connection for the suite. He left Wayne Wright's Gentleman in 1967, along with Mick Tucker, and they recruited Mark Topari for guitar and Steve Priest uh, as the bass player, and they called themselves the Sweet Shop. Um, after they'd been together for a bit, um, just before they recorded their first single, they changed the name of the band just to The Sweet. Um, Andy Scott joined in 1970. Uh, the first hit single, Funny Funny, and then after that they had, uh, they were on the top of the pops all the time, so he got well known. Um... At one point, he was beaten rather severely, kicked in the throat a few times, which dam damaged his vocal cords. Um, <clears throat> basically, he couldn't sing on the tour that they were on, and they were supposed to be playing opening for The Who, so he missed that opportunity. Some of the other band members had to do the singing for him. Of course, this doesn't always abode very well, because once they learned... The other guys learned that they could sing. He wasn't really as much of a necessity as he had been before. 
I'm sure that's what happened, but uh, nobody really says that. But um, anyways, his throat never 100% healed properly. He struggled with vocals, so um, eventually what happened is that became you know, a bit of a power struggle within the band, and um, he eventually uh, left the band, basically, went solo. Uh, did some country stuff for a while, and then gradually he ended up um, doing a three-tour, uh, three-show night with Pat Benatar uh, with his own band, and then eventually what happened is that the the band were always locked in court over the use of the name the suite and eventually what was decided on was that each band that had that name had to have the leader's name in front of it so it ended up being like um brian Conley's suite uh andy summers uh, not andy summers um andy scott's suite and that's how they pretty much distributed now he did eventually make kind of uh, an amends with mick tucker and um stephen priest they they kind of all got uh kind of got the other he actually sang at um the daughter of mick tucker's wedding uh not mick tucker's wedding his daughter's wedding sorry and um, then eventually um <clears throat> you know they tried a couple times to reconcile but his voice wasn't the same as it once was so they ended up um, not really ever really getting back together. And then, of course, he died with a uh, liver and kidney factor and, uh, and repeated heart attacks. And all this was brought on, of course, become, because he became a fairly severe alcoholic in the 70s and, you know, had kidney and liver problems, which eventually stressed his heart out and he had heart attacks. So uh, that was it for Brian Connolly. Now, I... This is one of the first guys that I really have listened to quite a bit. I like the suite a lot. Um, not just the stuff that you hear on the radio, like the uh, Fox on the Run or Ballroom Blitz, and those are their popular hits, but they had a lot of deep cuts that were really heavy. And they were a very hard rock band. A lot of people don't realize that they just think of them as a pop band that had lots of pop hits. Yeah, they had lots of pop hits because that's how they paid the bills. But a lot of the stuff on their albums was very heavy. And that's the reason why I like them. Um, they all fairly talented individuals, I think. Anyways, um, he was the blonde guy, in case people aren't really sure which one he was. He was the blonde singer at the front. Um, they were a glam rock band, so yeah, they dressed up kind of feminine, feminine with lots of lipstick and makeup and, you know, all that stuff. A lot of people thought they might have been gay, but I think that was just part of the image of being a glam rock band in the 1970s. So, um, anyways, there you have Brian Connolly, lead vocalist for The Sweet. Um, and he dies at age 51, but to me, a tremendous, tremendous talent. It's just unfortunate that that beating took place because it damaged his vocal cords. He was never quite the same, and you know, and then it just caused the rift in the in the band. So there you have it for that one. Now the second guy I chose tonight is uh, Kurt Winter. Some of you may know this guy. He was the he was he basically became the guitarist for the Guess Who after Randy Bachman left the band. That's that's his claim of fame, and he did a lot of writing with Burton Cummings. So, um, Burton Cummings once said that he's one of the greatest uh, writers, co-writers that he had ever worked with. Okay, so basically, uh, he was born April second, nineteen forty-six, in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, he died December fourteenth, nineteen ninety-seven, at the age of fifty-one. In uh, same. Winnipeg. Um, music, uh, basically rock, hard rock, pop rock. He was a guitarist, of course. Anyways, he started out um, in 1969 playing with uh, Bill Wallace on bass and Vance Schmidt on the drums in a band that they called The Brothers. That's what they called it. And they toured together for about six months. And then eventually all three of these guys ended up in the Guess Who at various times. I'm not really sure. It doesn't really tell all that. But 
it does say that they all eventually ended up in the Guess Who. And so what happened was that he joined the Guess, uh, he joined the Guess Who in 1970 uh, and was recruited by Burton Cummings basically to replace Randy Bachman along with another guitarist. They had two guitarists replace Bachman. And he stayed with the band till about 74 and then he left the band and was replaced by none other than Dominic Triano, of course. Uh, uh, when the Guess Who reformed a couple times after they broke up in the 70s, they reformed. Jim Cale reformed the band and he came back and played guitar for a short period of time with them. But then he eventually uh, decided to retire because of health, for health reasons pretty much, I think. Um, <clears throat> he died in 19... Uh, like I said, 1997 at the age of 51 from kidney failure, basically, you know. Anyway, so, um, he was a fairly decent writer. He did most of the music writing for the Guess Who after Randy Bachman left. Um, and, uh, so that's his claim to fame, really. Um, I think he was a decent music writer as well. I don't think he was bad or, you know, wasn't just a filler. I think he did a good job. Anyways, uh, Kurt Winter uh, claimed the fame as a member of the Guess Who. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I said something about him tonight because I've, I've liked the Guess Who music, especially the early stuff. Actually, I, I have to say this, I kind of like their music a little better with him than I did with Randy Bachman, which, you know, I do like BTO quite a bit. I like Randy Bachman a lot, and I like the guess who with Bachman quite a lot but I think this guy was just I just like the noise that they made more with him <laughs> kind of stupid way to put it I guess so then uh, what we normally do at this point in time after I've done my two uh, uh, displays about rock stars who have thrilled us but have since passed on I also do some honorable mentions it's not as lengthy it wasn't as chaotic a year I guess but I did want to mention a few people. So we'll do that now. Um, we have Randy California from The Spirit. George Young, of course, the uh, oldest brother of Malcolm and Angus Young from ACDC. He also uh, helped, helped with the production of their album, production of their albums, that is. Um, Kenny Pickett of The Creation, from the 60s, that is. Raymond Edwards of The Silhouettes. Bobby Schwinard of of Billy Squire, he was the drummer. Dolores Laverne Baker. Uh, Willie Wood of uh, Junior Walker's All Stars. Uh, West Ark Arkeen was a songwriter, and he did. He was most notable for some of the songs that he wrote for uh, GNR or Guns N' Roses, if you prefer. Uh, Frank Farrell of Super Tramp, one of the original bass player, I think he was. John. Oh, John, can't even read my own. John Denver, of course, I don't have to say much about him. Uh, don't normally give a lot of uh, kudos to country western music, but how can you miss John Denver, right? Glenn Buxton from Alice Cooper, of course. Henry Vel Velstein of Canned Heat. And Michael Hutchins of NXS. Yeah, I think he was one of the original people that formed the band. So there you have it. Um, rock stars who thrilled us, but have since passed on. 1997, episode 34. This will come out tomorrow morning at around 9 a.m. Normal, that's normal for during the week. It's not as normal to do it that way on the weekend, just because a lot of stuff has to be done early in the day, so I don't always have time for it. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, coming up... Friday Night Live. Still haven't chosen anything yet. I've been thinking about it. I will probably do something tomorrow. I have an idea of what I might do, but I'm not really sure yet. So I'll wait until I um until I decide to do it. And then of course we have um what's coming up on the weekend? Uh, yeah, another of uh, these videos will come out on uh, Sunday. Another uh, episode th 35 from 1998 come out on Sunday uh, the other thing that I will be doing is the last um, nope I think we have two more 
Nope, we don't. We have one more on Monday night. Look back. We have um, Jethro Tull's uh, Minstrels and the Gallery. I decided to do that um, as my final progressive rock month. Uh, this will be episode D, I guess. And uh, I just finished uh, Wednesday night's uh, <clears throat> three-parter on pro favorite progressive rock songs. Uh, this week coming, we're going to do favorite songs that aren't progressive from progressive rock bands. It was a suggestion by somebody who I thought was a good one, so I wanted to put it out here. Um, actually, probably, there's a few songs in there that are probably I probably like more than the progressive stuff, <laughs> so it, it should work out fine. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, I might, there's, um, I've been thinking of doing a recent album release review so this album came out about two two and a half years ago and i've been listening to it and i've decided i'm going to do a review on it i may do this as an extra episode it won't be part of the look backs because it's not a look back it's a recent really re recent review recent release review and that's this amorphous androgynous and peter hamill album i think it's deserves to be given some attention here so I'm going to so I'll be doing something like that on the weekend it'll just be an off one off show I'm thinking that my uh, hauls won't come out until the following weekend normally I do them on the weekend because that's when I have the most time so uh, this weekend would be the 23rd 24th 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. yeah so it'll probably my my final uh, my hauls episode for um, April will come out the following Saturday. So, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this show tonight, and that you, um, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. Give me comments on anything that you see here that uh, is of interest to you, or you know, if I said something you don't really agree with, you know, or maybe uh, I I've said something that you might misinterpret, but you know. The best way to deal with misinterpretation is just saying what you want to say and then I'll correct it if uh, if I misinterpret it because you know I can't know everything up event uh, up front you know sometimes you don't know that you're saying something that other people might not agree with until after they agree don't agree with it so anyways uh, I hope you enjoyed this show and uh, see it see this episode tomorrow morning so from Prog monster have a good night bye